Paging Dr. Spooky! Dr. Spooky! 80s horror movie reviews! Dr. Spooky! Dr. Spooky! Horrible movies for you to view! Dr. Spooky! Dr. Spooky! You won't like anything you see, but that's cool! Dr. Spooky! 80s horror movie reviews! <laughs> And now, meet our host, Dr. Spooky! Hey, little help here? Come on! I thought we fixed this thing! Welcome, boys and girls! to the Dr. Spooky's 80s Review Show, where we review such classic films from the 1980s as The Shining, The Evil Dead, and Hellraiser. <laughs> but don't let me keep you going any longer. Let me introduce to you Nurse Spooky, who will tell us the name of tonight's movie. <laughs> Nurse Spooky. Where's Nurse Spooky? She quit. She quit? What do you mean she quit? All boys and girls, I've just been informed that Nurse Spooky is doing her midnight rounds at the blood bank. <laughs> and so we have a new co-host with us tonight to introduce the movie. His name is... Um, what's your name? Intern Spooky. Intern Spooky! Intern Spooky! Tell us tonight's movie! Tonight's movie is 1981's Night of Horror! Are you fucking kidding me? Anyway, well, 1981's Night of Horror. It's a chilling tale about... What is this movie about? I've just been in... Th I've just watched... 1981's Night of Horror. FML, I swear, FML, you know. Uh, it, it's a, it, it is a, it's, 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 I, I don't know how to describe it, so let's just go ahead and watch it. It's, is this the best we can do? I, I told them we would be reviewing The Shining. But this is not The Shining! I wrote the film. So, we start with two guys in a bar talking about uh, something incomprehensible due to the worst sound recording ever. Even the subtitles can't hear what they're saying. Um, no, I, I can't go. Hey man, what's wrong? Of course something reverses the new album in two weeks. And flashback uh, following a funeral. Steve and Jeff, half-brothers, and their respective mates, Susan and Colleen, decide to go on a trip to this cabin their father owned or something like that. Which means a driving scene that takes fucking forever and two weeks to complete. Meanwhile, on the drive there, they're talking about stuff that really has nothing to do with the main plot. Then, they stop driving. The brothers argue about their dead father, where they uh, engage in a battle to see which is better. The underacting or the overacting. Dad, oh man, that is incredible. After all he put us through, you come along calling Dad almost like he was a real father. And how many kids do you have? Have you ever been a real father? No. So how the hell do you know what a real father should act like? The women, meanwhile, talk about how the place they're heading to is scary or cursed or... I don't know, something like that. And next... We, fuck, more driving! Jeez. Well, this stops when they hit something, but when they get out, it's not there. Shocker, huh? Uh, following this, we have a breakdown with the most bizarre breakdown noises I've ever heard. <laughs> Sounds like Mecha Godzilla being junked for spare parts. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 I forgot to mention. There's this uh, completely pointless interlude where one of the women is drawing some uh, ape people. Uh, and apparently this was because the director was considering doing a remake of Planet of the Apes. 
Yeah, that's a true story. The movie world just dodged a bullet on that one. And when they get to the cabin, which we never see, Steve starts to wander around, uh, sees something spooky, apparently, and then runs back to the group. But rather than leave, they decide to have a seance, because... Reasons? Y you have to realize, I'm trying my best to recall the plot, but any omissions are due to my complete disinterest in the movie, and if you uh, decide to watch it, eh, you'll see why. Anyway, following the seance, they are contacted by uh, dead Civil War soldiers who want them to find the body of their leader, Captain Who Gives a Shit, and unite him with his head. Uh, before this happens, he begins to talk, and talk, and talk, and talk, and talk. His, his voice sounds like something like Emperor Palpatine gargling a mouthful of porcupines. And then we have an extended Civil War reenactment sequence. And it goes on forever. Just like everything else in this movie. And then as you, the viewer, slip into a coma, they find the dead captain, bring him and his head together so he can go to the next life where I'm sure he'll be boring another group of people. And then we go back to the first scene where we still can't understand anything that's going on. No. No. How could I have a reason? And that's it. Do I still have a pulse? After watching that piece of crap, I'm surprised if I do. Jesus. Don't worry, it's medicinal. I'm a doctor of the world. Well, anyway, that was Night of Horror from 1981. Um, what can I say? Well, I, I've, uh, at least I've made a set of notes, I decided. I said, made, I made a set of notes that I'm going to read for you uh, as a warning or as advice, take it what you will, uh, to both the audience and the director about this movie. And I think this will sum it up perfectly. <clears throat> First, to the audience. Uh, yes. When watching this movie, if, if you decide to watch this movie, which I don't recommend, and, and I'm a doctor, so take my advice, uh, wear sunglasses in the night day scenes, because if otherwise you're going to go blind. It's like staring into the snow for like 24 hours blinking, without blinking. It's that bad. Um, and then the night times, uh, I don't... I don't know what you do though, like that. Bigger flashlight, I suppose? I don't know. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, get a hearing aid. Or two. Maybe three. A backup. Because you're not going to understand anything they're saying. Well, maybe a couple of words, but nothing. What you can't understand makes no sense at all. So just, you know. Uh, but don't. You know, do that. Dude. This is a kid to bring a few stages to watch this. Ah, yes. Um, the, the camera work is. Very interesting. This is an observation I made. Very interesting. It is uh, the, from the point and shoot style of directing. What you do is you set the camera up and you press record and then that's it. That's pretty much it. I mean, you. I suppose there are some scenes where you know you you show the people close shot and medium shot and the long shot, but that's about it. I mean, it's not very imaginative, but uh, probably the most imaginative in this film. Fun to think of it more than the script, I think. Anyway, the last bit of advice is um, uh, the acting. Uh, my advice to the director uh, next time you make a movie, uh, cast actors that know more emotion, who have a better range of emotion than hysterical or wooden. Because that's what we've got here. We've got some people overacting uh, to the sky. We've got, we've got people, uh, you know, and the other ones are. Uh, like, I don't know, they're like barely conscious, if they are, I mean, who knows. But, uh, before, I go, before I go, I'm going to give my advice to the f director of this movie, and I, what do I know about making movies, I'm just a doctor, but I thought I'd give it a try, so here I go. <clears throat> my advice to the director of Night of Horror, uh, if they can't hear it, they will not listen. If they can't see it, they will not watch. And if they can't understand what the fuck is going on, they will turn the channel.
You know, I need a drink. Oh, I got one. Like I said, it's been this soon. Anyway, that's it for tonight's uh, edition of Dr. Spooky's 80 Reviews Show. Good night, folks. Two surgeons were joking doing? about sutures and had each what? other stitches. Funny, funny, funny. The doctor couldn't transfer the organs because he didn't have the guts to do it. Why are brain surgeons ambitious? They want it!